Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called The Most Terrifying Sound in the Galaxy. There is an author note that this is a rather dark story, and is written by DWL52-2. Snap! That one single sound had become the galaxy's most terrifying sound. The act of placing two digits together and applying pressure until one slides down and impacts the base of the other with a loud noise. Most races of the galactic community are unable to replicate the effect. Their digits neither unable to move that way or lack the flesh to make the snapping noise. There are in fact five species that can successfully snap their fingers. The Mocked, the Rabnorka, the Questel, the Thresk, and the Humans. The reason why the sound of a finger snap is so terrifying is due to the last two races mentioned before. The Thresk and the human seem to have evolved from a type of primate, so they have similar build with some differences. The humans stand between four and six feet tall, with some of them standing even taller. They are bipedal, with two arms at the end of the hand, with five digits each. They are covered by a thin layer of skin that has sections of the hair that can grow rather long while other patches remain short and thin. Then, on top of their heads is a single head that contains their brains and most of their sensory organs. The Thresk, however, stand between six and ten feet tall. They too are bipedal. However, they have four arms instead of two. They also have the hair that covers their bodies. But unlike the humans, their hair is thick like fur and covers them from head to toe, with the exception of hands, feet, and external sensor organs. Their heads are much wider than that of a human as well, and their eyes are lower, closer to the side of their wide mouths. The humans were a joke when they first came into the galaxy. Their technology was primitive, their demeanor weak, and they entered the Galactic Council as a peaceful race. We all thought that they were pushovers, and that they would all be dead in a century at most. Peaceful races don't last long here, especially when you're up against the races as aggressive as the Thresk. Not long after their entrance, they showed up with a small fleet of ships to aid the Crunch, an insectoid race who was suffering from a species-wide plague. Billions of their kind were dying every week, and they had already lost five of their worlds. The humans came with the aid of medical teams and scientists, who quickly created a cure for the plague. These scientists and medics managed to save the entire Crunch race from the very grips of death. The saving of the Crunch did not sit well with the Thresk, who were patiently waiting for the Crunch to die so that they may jump in and claim their territory for their own. Patience was something the Thresk had a severe lack of, and having their plans ruined set them off in a rage. Their war with the humans started with the destruction of the same medical fleet, as well as the closest human colony. Enraged by the unprovoked attack, the human counselor accused the Thresk of murder and war crimes, the Thresk counselor claimed that it wasn't them, but after evidence was brought forth proving that they were behind the attack, they said that they were sorry and that they wouldn't do it again. Three days later, another colony attacked and destroyed, and again the council was met with, I'm sorry you won't do it again. After several more similar attacks, it became obvious that no matter how much the humans asked for hostility to stop, the Thresk would just lie through their teeth and make false apologies. The worst part of this was nobody in the council said anything. We all remained silent. After all, if you can't defend yourself, you shouldn't be offering aid in the first place. Nearly two human years went by, and the humans were forced to pull back to their home system, only stopping to retreat when the Thresk no longer found killing them entertaining. We all thought the humans were beaten back to their worlds and broken with their spirit. We were wrong. The humans went silent. The only people who even saw them after this were those who stayed trading partners with them, and the Crunch, but not a single human was seen outside the Sol system after that. It seemed that the humans would die out after all, and much sooner than the 100 year pot that we had all bet against. They completely pulled out of everything, including the Galactic Council, stating the lack of action from the Council to stop the Thresk aggression was just as bad as the Thresk's actions themselves. That the Council was content with watching two species commit genocide, and they were not wrong. Thirty years went by without the humans stepping a toe outside their home system, and by then the Council had practically forgotten about them. That was until one day every Councillor across the galaxy got a single message requesting a meeting 
at the great halls of Umshire, the council's capital. Nobody knew the, who sent the message, but every race's representative showed up. It took some time, but eventually the lead councillors called the meeting to a start, and immediately asked who had called this meeting, as nobody would take credit for the message. From the middle of the great hall, on the platform, in the very centre, where nobody was currently standing, a loud male's voice spelled out, We called the meeting! There was a loud clicking sound, the snapping of fingers, and the air above the stage started to shimmer and glow, before revealing a rather tall, well-built human male. The uniform he wore was unknown, but definitely had a military feel. Dress blue uniform covered his body, with several ribbons on the left side of his blouse, a name tag on the right, and on the lapel of his blue suit sat four gold stars. The shock of the council was quickly turned into laughter as the various races remembered the human. Some of the councillors started making taunts at the human. Ah, look at the pathetic humans playing army. Others started yelling about how disrespectful it was for a dying race to even stand in the great halls. The human held out an arm and snapped his fingers. The lights in the great hall all go out at the exact same time. Some kind of trick done by the human. The representatives all stopped laughing for a moment but quickly started their laughing again. <laughs> no, did your intimidation check not work out, little human? Go back to your world and die. Frick off, you primate. The laughter died down quickly when the light from the star Umshai orbited started to fade. Looking through the transparent roof revealed an enormous artificial moon decloaking between the planet and its star, similar in the way this human had decloaked. Cloaking technology was something that was still in testing phases, for even the most advanced races. It had some small-scale success in past, but it all had failed miserably when trying to work on anything bigger than a war rat. This impossible technology was being used here on an astronomical scale. The human snapped his fingers again. This time, a wall of monitors behind the council leaders turned on, each monitor showing a different solar system with the name of said system below it. Every single system belonged to the Thresk, what is this human? The Thrask representative yells. Thirty-five years ago, we entered into this council as a new race to the stars. We had hoped to. He was cut off by the Clegorian counselor. To die, human, your species would be better suited as a centerpiece for a banquet. We had hoped to come here and learn from one another, to travel the stars and help each other. Sadly, we learned the hard way that this is not the way of things. What was the total count, human, before we got bored of your pleas? Twenty billion? Thirty billion? Asks the Thresk counselor, clearly, trying to agitate the human. It was thirty-two billion people, the human responds. Thirty-two billion innocent men, women, and children. The human snaps his fingers, and on one monitor, the star goes supernova. The shockwave from the star disintegrates the planets in its orbit before it hits the camera, and the monitor goes to static. The human turns and looks at the Thresk representative. You greeted us into the galaxy with aggression and bloodshed, when we came here to learn and help with open arms. The Thresk representative, his eyes still on the monitor, quickly turned to the human, and growl escapes from his mouth before they start to smile. That is fine trickery, human. You almost had me with that. Clearly some tech-savvy person created an image on a computer. Now clear. He was cut off by several notifications across his entire great hall. Several representatives are getting notifications all at once. Gosh, of horror can be heard all around the great hall. One of the neat counselors, a grand, speaks up. We have got confirmation of the destruction of the Aerist system. Its star has gone supernova. Can anyone else confirm this? There are several other races that confirm the information is correct. The human in the center starts to smile, holding out his hand and snapping his fingers again. This time, the second monitor in place shows the star going supernova. And, like the first one, it completely destroys its planets before the camera is destroyed. Silence fills the great hall, and a few seconds later, another round of notifications. More gasps. <laughs> How have you done this? One of the counselors screams out, followed by the Thrask representative yelling, You will die for this, human! The human puts his fingers together again and holds them, ready to snap. 
We demand that the council holds the Tresk accountable for their actions and make policies to ensure he is cut off by the Gorn councillor who sits in the high council. How dare you make demands of this council, you human... The human snaps his fingers again, and this time the first monitor changes its video feed of static to that of Grand Counselor's home system. As everyone watches, the human puts his fingers together. Stop him! Someone stop him before he snaps his fingers again! You can kill my counselors, says the human. You can even kill me. However, any human can snap their fingers and do what I have. He turns to look at the league counselors. Isn't that right, Sergeant Ramirez? The Garand counselor lets out a shriek as a knife decloaks right in front of his throat. A human male, who is a moment before cloaked behind the counselor, leans down and whispers loud enough for the counselor's microphone to hear. That is correct, Admiral. Sergeant Ramirez brings his other hand around to the other side of the counselor's face and snaps his fingers. On the monitor, the Lactus system is destroyed by its star going supernova. The Grand Hall is now so quiet that the human in the center barely has to raise his voice to be heard. Speak carefully, counselors. I am not in a forgiving mood. How? How did you come by this technology? You didn't have anything close to this when you fell back, asks the gaunt, the knife still pressed to his throat. Oh, that was easy, the human says in the center. We watched you. We advanced our stealth technology very quickly. Once we were able to cloak individuals, we infiltrated your ranks. Any time one of your scientists comes close to making a cloaking tech or advanced weapon, we sabotage the work and stole the data. I do have to say, some of your security is so bad a human child could hack into your most secured information. You dare to try and tell us that your children can breach our security? Do you think we are stupid? says the Thrask counselor. The human snaps his fingers another time. On the third monitor shows the destruction of the third Thresk system, silencing the counselors again. Ironically, at this point, the only race that is still somewhat talking are the Crunch. Their representative is talking to his staff sitting behind him. Human, he yells out. If you want this council to make changes, perhaps you should start with peaceful actions. You're right, the human says. He turns to the Thresk representative. Let's start fresh. I am Fleet Admiral Austin Bowdish, with the Unified Terran Space Command. I apologize for the actions my government and I have taken against your people. Will you accept peaceful negotiations with the Terran peoples? Go spack yourself, human, the Thresk Counselor says, practically spitting the words at him. You may have blown up three of my systems, but we... Admiral Bowdish snaps his fingers, and a fourth monitor springs to life, with the system star going supernova. How dare you! I'll have my fighting force attack your homeworld for one cent! Admiral Browdish snaps his fingers again, and the fifth solar system is destroyed. I, I'm sorry. I won't do that again, says Browdish. He snaps his fingers again, this time making direct eye contact with a Thrask representative. Eyes wide, brows down, the rage emitting from this human can almost be felt. The Thrask representative and the rest of the Great Hall remain quiet, except for the crotch who are now chanting for peace with their high-pitched voices. Admiral Browdish snaps his fingers again, and the sixth system is gone. I'm sorry, we won't do that again. He snaps his fingers again. I'm sorry, we won't do that again. Every representative is now terrified, watching this pink-skinned primate just snap his fingers, and billions of lives are extinguished. Browdish snaps his fingers five more times, each time pausing to repeat his statement. I'm sorry, we won't do that again. Each time he says this, he raises his voice just a little until he is screaming at the top of his lungs, all the while slowly walking directly at the Thrask Counselor. Finally, he stops snapping in between words, I'm sorry, we won't do it. He steps right in front of the Thrask Counselor's desk, again! He growls the words through his teeth at the representative and snapping his fingers right in their face. Eighteen. Eighteen solar systems have been turned into dust. Countless trillions of lives ended. The silence in the Great Hall is only being overpowered by the crunch chanting, Peace! 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 Admiral Browdish turns and walks back to the center of the Great Hall, leaving the Thresk Counselor now screaming in frustration and sorrow as his people are decimated. When Bowdish gets back to the center, the Thresk representative finally pries his eyes off the monitors and glares at the human. I'll kill you for that, human, 
the Dresk counselor yells, Shut your f***ing mouth! Admiral Bowdish yells back. He then turns and addresses the Great Hall. When we came here, we wanted nothing but to fit in. We were starstruck by your technology and your worlds. How? We even overlooked your moral, unethical practices due to being so amazed by you all. I did some digging in your historical records a while back, and something I found made me kind of laugh. He turns to the Thresk counselor. The Thresk Empire was only created about 5,000 years ago. Huh, I do not see why that would be amusing, says another counselor. The Thresk think they are so great, he replies. They think they can do anything they want because they are strong. Well, I find their empire funny because what took them 5,000 years to build, I will erase with a snap my fingers. Tell me, Thresk, who is more powerful now? He snaps his fingers and the 19th system belonging to the Thresk is evaporated. The Thresk counselor roars as he stands from his chair. He jumps up onto the desk and intending to jump down onto the ground floor, charging at the Admiral. However, before he can, Admiral Bowdish snaps his fingers again, and a Nautic counselor sitting in front of the Thresk counselor is suddenly converted to brain matter as the Thresk's head is simply explodes, his corpse falling to the floor and the sound of thunder echoing in the great hall. A human with a high-powered rifle decloaks from behind the Thresk's aids, smoke still trailing out from its barrel. It points its weapon at the aids but stands still, not attacking. The rest of the Great Hall's counselors don't seem to know what to do at this point. It seems that the humans have full control over them, and one wrong move will result in billions dying. Or them. Most start to look behind them nervously, looking for the human hiding in the dark. Just how many cloaked soldiers are in the Great Hall with them? How many counselors have guns placed to the back of their heads? Baldish then turns and addresses the lead counselors. You have allowed this galaxy to be plundered and brutalized by selfish races who think that they are better than others. And why shouldn't we? Says the Dawn Cat's representative. Most of us were exploring the stars when your race was still digging through their own feces for food. One of the monitors changes and its image to the home system of the Dawn Cats. Admiral Browdish holds his fingers together. Careful, Representative. Your race stayed out of our conflicts and refused to pick a side. Your neutrality will give you this one warning. You speak carefully. Your people's lives depend on it. The following hour is spent with Admiral Bowdish snapping his fingers over and over and over again, obliterating star after star of disrespectful representatives who refuse to make peaceful agreements. By the time the remaining counselors finally gave in to the humans' demands, every Thresk system was destroyed. Several other representatives were missing several systems, and a couple were now a part of a species on the verge of extinction. Every race now absolutely terrified of the sound of snapping. Well, all but the crunch. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps, Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnolds, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Andrew Cole. Thank you very much.